Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. Today we're gonna continue with the Pentium 2 rebuild series here. This is our motherboard. I field stripped it, so to speak. So a couple of things I wanted to do. I want to recap it mainly because I want to turn back, back the clock, so to speak. Uh, there are different op opinions on recapping. There's nothing obviously wrong with this board, so I wouldn't worry about running it for, a, you know, another few years. But uh, yeah, I want to turn back the clock and I want to upgrade these caps here to 1800 microfarads. These are 1500. It's mainly due to overclocking, stuff like that. I just like to experiment a little bit. I don't recommend changing the values too much. But considering the margin is usually plus minus 20% and I see more than that. So going up to 1800, I don't see a big issue with that. Then we have small caps here, four of them. Tantalums, and I do hate those. I hate them a lot. I had this idea then that we could replace those with some uh, polymers instead. I think that's gonna work fine. I'm not a 100% sure the values of these. I, so I bought some 10 microfarad, uh, 16 volt rated polymers. So just in case these are actually rated for 16 or higher. So this is 12 volt rate, just in case I could have measured, but I forgot. So I figured we could actually measure the capacities on these and there should be nothing higher than 12 volts on the motherboard anyway so buying 16 volt rated polymers should be fine so that's uh, one thing i want to do another thing i want to do and hopefully don't forget is uh, do some slight modifications to the id connectors so i actually had tested hard drives on this motherboard and it has a 32 gigabyte limit it has nothing to do with the uh, with the connectors here though but in my testing of hard drives uh, my 40 gigabyte ID drive from uh, IBM decided to die after Windows 19 install, so I could test this out. So I've been using the included ID cables that came with the case and the motherboard. And the reason is uh, I can't fit these. And this is a common problem. Like you have ID cables that are keyed here, but uh, you don't have the pin removed here. So I can't uh, use these. They fit. They don't won't fit no matter what I do, obviously. And this is an 80 pin. We don't need that for 8033. But I mean, you might be what you have you want to use. I usually have one for lab purposes, so that won't fit either because it's the same issue. This won't fit. So I think uh, what we're gonna do is just remove those extra pins because you still have the key here. So yeah, we could remove that uh, pin and actually have the key work. Uh, the pin key here. So we have two keys. To, on the edge here and the pin here. So that's uh, something I want to do also, just to make it a little bit more convenient to pick out a cable if you need to swap the cable here for uh, this motherboard or something. Otherwise you have to, you could technically just uh, drill these out, that's one solution sometimes it's done. It just, it's easier when you have a system that's built, but uh, since we're working on the motherboard anyway, we might as well fix the problem where the problem lies. So yeah, let's get to recapping and modifying a little bit. The motherboard is on the hot plate, so we can get started. I'm actually gonna do the ID first so I don't forget them. So we're gonna pull out the, the pins here for the keying, so that will actually work. It's pin 20. Now I have no idea how hard these are stuck in the plastic, for example. That could be a little bit annoying. Or removing pin 20, which is the second row from the outside, this one and um, should be that one. So I'll see if I can push them down with iron so I can grab them on the other side with some uh, some pliers or something. Well, that went quite easy. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of clean up here. So yeah, a little bit of sheeting, but I had another board laying around just to make sure. 
So if we did this correctly, this should fit now. So. So before we remove the first cap here, I have a cap list on the screen here, you can see. If you have this motherboard and I want to recap it. Otherwise we also have a version of this image on our Discord with a lot of other cap lists for motherboards. So if you need, if you want to buy caps from motherboard or something, you can use that. Hopefully there are no major errors, but uh, yeah, you never know. I tend to do a cap list just to make it easier for me to know what goes where. That way I can remove all the caps and then put them back together at the same time.
all the caps have been removed from the board and I removed the tantalums. So I can actually see now when I have them removed that they are uh, rated 10 microfarads and uh, 16 volts. But we're gonna test them anyway, I figure in my tester here. Hopefully the legs are long enough for this to work. Ten mic for we lost 0.3. And uh, these are rated at 25 volts when I checked the sticker now, so these are rated even higher. But uh, I picked them based on the size because they can't be bigger than 5 millimeter. Time to add some caps. I'm gonna start uh, with some 220 microfarad ones. I'm gonna use words. Have four left. The reason is I bought the wrong size, about eight millimeter diameter, and instead of 6.3, so they won't fit very well. So I did check the height here. These are a little bit taller than the originals, but the CPU is gonna clear with a couple of millimeters at least, so not a problem. Next up, I think we sort out the V-core caps here. I guess you could go taller than 16 millimeters that these are, just like the originals. Uh, as far as I can see, they won't touch the backside of the CPU, but depending on your Pentium 2 or 3, how it's configured, it might be an issue. I stuck with uh, this factory 16 millimeter here, and these are Panasonic uh, FR uh, low ESR caps. So I'm gonna replace them. I do want some good caps. I'm gonna try to avoid uh, getting uh, this in the slot one here. Even if, if, if I were to get this uh, gooey stuff in there, I can use the electronic cleaner here because it's me it basically melts it. So it's basically, uh, we can just flush it off, basically. So just uh, tr want to avoid doing that.
So only thing left now to do is to replace the tantalums uh, with uh, something else. So I'm gonna use polymer to replace them. The motherboard is fully recapped now, so I'm gonna give it a good clean and then we can uh, put the CMOS chip back in and the brackets for the slot one and the heatsink and uh, then test it. And then we're gonna flash the BIOS. So I checked out the BIOSes for this motherboard and it seems like the last BIOS has all the fixes I need for my hard drive, I think. So we're gonna try that because the current BIOS has 32 GB limit and uh, the last one doesn't have that. The motherboard is dry after some uh, cleaning, so we're gonna put it back together again. I think we'll start here adding some paste. It's not needed, but uh, well, why have a heatsink and absolutely no paste on it? So yeah, I think it came out pretty nice. Let's install the CPU. I have wiped off some turn paste here. It's still coming out a little bit since we did this. But that's, that's just a good thing. That means the gap here between heatsink and the IGS is getting smaller and smaller. 
I want a thin layer paste. I have these two sticks of RAM here. So it says 128 megabyte SD RAM PC100, and then it says 125 megahertz. So you got eight nanoseconds. But I have tried these two in the motherboard before we recapped it, let it run some mem test two passes, and they run fine at 112 megahertz and 222 so cast two and two on the sub timings. So we're gonna use those for a total of 256 megs of RAM. I think 128 it works, but it swaps too much for my taste and causes stuttering. I think 256 is like my minimum even Windows 98. And for hard drive, well, we don't have a hard drive because my hard drive uh, that I installed for this died after the Windows 98 install. <laughs> it was an IBM disk start, so kaput. So it's gonna use this, but it has horrible uh, access time, causing a lot of status, can't really benchmark with it, but it, it will work this for to do something like pulse flashing or just function testing the system. But you're getting a lot of stuff there when it tries to do random access to this thing. So that's why I don't like compact flash adapters, they suck. They're perfectly good for like 486s and down, uh, if you don't have like UDMA. But uh, for anything that can do 8833 and up, it sucks. So my plan here is to run the CPU at 450 MHz, since we had a cache for that. Apparently Axel, who donated the TNT2, this is still somewhat broken. Uh, had the same cache and I don't know if it was a P2 or P3 but he got his up to like 600. Stable I don't know, I don't think, uh, I think it's suicide. I don't have a 124 megahertz bus option on this uh, board, I only have 133 after 112. We don't have any V-core options either so we would have to do uh, tape mod if we wanted that or modify the board to actually increase the V-core of the CPU. But I'm not that interested in overclocking this that much. I want to overclock it. I'm perfectly fine with 112 bus, which gives us 450 here and 112 here. And when we and the running cast two and so on the sub timings. So yeah, bench is in place. So let's test this out. So, we're ready to power it on. I have checked my board for shorts and uh, cap orientation. So I'm fairly sure there's nothing bad like that with it. So I'm gonna try it now, hopefully it works. Maybe power. Blue light and post. Beep beep. So let's do some quick configuration here. Yeah, let's save that and see if we get into Windows. Windows is running here. We've got a pins in two, and turn it six megs of RAM. And actually start to view C. So yeah, turns into slot one SECC packaging. 400 MHz. So looks correct. Main board Soltec i440BX. So we're on the early version of BIOS, it's called a K BIOS. I'm getting an update to the K4 BIOS. I put the BIOS here on the on the hard drive here. Oh, we're posting here. Now it's important uh, that we go into the menu here, the boot menu in Windows. I'm gonna hit F8. Try to hit that. F8 here. See if we can get it. Yeah, so command prompt, uh, save command prompt only because we don't want to load anything to memory. Uh, that might risk corrupting the BIOS flash. Shouldn't think Linux. So let's try the included with the BIOS or the flash. 
and the bias 67 B K4 I should solve my hard drive issues the 32 GB limit you want to save BIOS and uh, I have the original K K1 anyway I didn't type the file extension dash dot bin and American keyboard and once again we don't want to save are you sure yeah I'm sure F1 reset, F10 exit. Let's try that. I should have a new BIOS doing it this post. I got beep. Pause, pause, pause. At the bottom we can see 1224999. Uh, so we should be able to go into the BIOS now. I wonder if we got any new menus or not. I wouldn't suspect so, but you never know. But it seems like uh, the flash is good. Over here I have a Samsung 500 gig hard drive. It's uh, it's fairly old, I would guess like 2007. But I have plenty of these. I probably had 12 in the beginning, but I still have a few, and I use them in better machines. So we, I bought this adapter. I did I did to sort that. So I hooked it up here. I tested one of these hard drives before with the old BIOS, and I think it was detected, but like at as an 8 gigabyte, so what happens is if the hard drive is at least over 137 gigs or something like that, so I got to 50, it, uh, see, or a 160, even I had a 160, it will see it as an 8 gig hard drive. And uh, some hard drives, like my 80 gigabyte C, yet it just refused to work if, unless it was jumped S32. So I used uh, one of my lab cables that fits with the key. I put in a Matrox G450 PCI. That's nice because it has DVI out, so I can run a very cheap capture card for like 25 euros from like any PCI motherboard basically, so 4 8, 6 and up. So we're gonna test this and see if we can uh, detect this hard drive properly, or at least up to 137 gigabytes, something like that, because I don't think the spice will support anymore. Um, you have need a new motherboard basically or some really good BIOS modding skills to get it past that but I'm most interested in at a size that is reasonable like 137 gigs and if I can use that that's more than enough I don't need 500 it's just convenient because these are pretty much free like 255 gigs hard drives I get them out of scrap computers from time to time so let's fire this up and see if uh, we can configure this hard drive let's see here the hard drive should show up yeah it did uh, let's get into the bias here. Can't really see much uh, of the hard drive here, but we can do this uh, detection here. So it just says 136, so I don't know, megabytes or gigabytes, but yeah. Suppose when you read the heads of cylinders, should make sense. But I'm gonna go with yes for option 2 there, which is LBA. Uh, I have nothing on the other ones. 136 gigabytes, so that's more than usable. Before I couldn't do this, I could manually, I think, set to double by something like 50 gigs, but I don't know if it worked. But it's uh, at least uh, not getting stuck because what happened before was either, depending on the drive, would either get stuck or it would uh, detect it as a 8 gigabyte drive. LBA Udima 33, yeah, 136 gigabyte. Yeah. The recapping of the motherboard was successful. We also did. Uh, Change out the tantalum for polymers, and that seems to work fine. We changed the keying on the IDE connectors here, so you can use uh, any cable basically. And uh, we flash the BIOS, so we can use more modern hard drives or an SSD if we want to. But I think I'm gonna use something like uh, either a Western Digital Black, which I also have, or one of these Samsung. Uh, they're both uh, 7200 RPM and uh, 16 megs of cache, they're perfectly good, cheap, hard drives. So yeah, in part 4 we're gonna basically build the system and uh, give it a spin.
and that should be the last part. So thank you for watching and have a nice day. You can join us on our Discord server. We host public lands when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.